What is going on guys, it's Murder Dwarf here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So we have a new update to the Mastercore exploit released by Macaulay, which of course allows us to load PS2 ISOs uh, on our PS4 or PS5 up to the latest firmware. And this new update allows us to load the exploit and the PS2 ISOs from a USB drive instead of sending them over the network. So this has two main advantages. Of course, the fact that you can do this completely offline you do not need a network connection and it does not rely on another device to sideload the ISOs for the PS2 games or for the, you know, the ELF files as well for the exploit. So that is a pretty big improvement. There are some issues at the moment with this initial release. Uh, one of them is the fact that there's no PS5 support right now. There seems to be some trouble getting the exploit working on the PS5. And also there are some issues where certain USB drives or external hard drives are causing problems when sending the ISO over, the transfer just cuts out and fails randomly at certain points. This is a repeatable behavior that I've found with one of my uh, external hard drives, which is a USB 3.0 external hard drive. However, I also have a old SanDisk Cruiser Blade, which is a USB 2.0 drive, and it's perfectly stable. I can use that drive, I can send a four gigabyte ISO over, no problem. So I don't know if it's a USB 2.0 works and USB 3.0 doesn't or whether it's more, you know, certain drives work and certain drives don't for various unknown reasons. There's not really been a general consensus on this yet. So you might want to wait a few days for a new release to come out uh, that fixes some of these issues. And I'll leave a pinned comment down in the comment section once these issues have been addressed. But uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set this up anyway here in this video. Because it doesn't work on the PS5 right now, I'm going to show you how to do it on the PS4. I'm just going to use my 9.00 PS4 as an example. But again, you can follow this on a, a PS4 that's on the latest firmware. 10.50 support has been added, so you can do this on 10.50. But you need to download the 10.50 specific version. And uh, obviously, if the PS5 gets support in the coming days, then you'll be able to follow this on the PS5 as well once we have a PS5 version available for 6.50 or 7.00. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this right here. So first of all, we've got the USB ELF loader. We need this so that we can load the actual exploit files, the ELF files from a USB drive. And then we also need the PS2 USB game loader, which will then allow us to also load our PS2 ISOs from the USB drive as well. So of course, for setting this up, there is an easier way. We have Echo Stretch has once again gone ahead and created some handy pre-made saves for you that you can just re-sign to your profile. I'll leave Echo Stretch's uh, YouTube channel link down in the video description. He definitely deserves a lot of credit for doing this because it saves everybody else a lot of time and he's always coming out with these uh, pre-made saves. So all you need to do here is download the one that corresponds to your firmware version. In my case, I'm doing 9.00 as an example. So I'll download this one. But again, if you're on 10.01 or 10.50, you download those ones. So for formatting the USB drive, I recommend using Rufus. You can download this right here. I'll leave a link to it in the description from rufus.ie and just download the portable version. All you need to do is format your USB drive in XFAT format, which obviously you can do within Windows pretty easily. You can just go into the File Explorer, select your USB drive here, and then right click on it and click Format, and then just select the file system as XFAT. However, in some cases, it may format the drive using the wrong partition scheme. So we need to make sure we're using the MBR partition scheme. That's why I'd recommend using the Rufus application here because it allows you to explicitly select the partition scheme, in which case we want to select the MBR partition scheme right here. And then we're just going to select the file system as XFAT and then call the USB drive whatever you want to label it and just call it USB. And then I click start to reformat the drive. And again, obviously make sure you back up any data that was on the USB drive beforehand. Okay, so next we need to install the save on our USB drive. So if you have the Save Wizard application, you can install it to the USB and re-sign it to your profile. So it'll work on your PS4 or PS5 that's on the latest firmware. So what you're gonna want to do there, if you do have Save Wizard, is you open up the Save Wizard application right here. And then we go to select our USB drive. We go to re-sign, and then we click on the import option 
and we select the save file we downloaded, the zip file we downloaded from uh, Echo Stretch. We go ahead and open that up right here. And then we select the version of the game that you have installed on your PS4 or PS5. So in my case, I have the 02282 version, which is the European version. That's the one you want to select if you're in Europe and you downloaded the game. That'll be the version you have. If you're in the US, then you'll have the 02199 version. So in my case, it's going to be the European one that I'm going to import. So I just want to double click it, click on the actual save file here and then click on import and then apply my profile, which will re-sign it to my profile and it will copy it over to the USB drive so it's ready to be used. Well, as you can see at the moment, Save Wizard seems to be having some trouble. Server is very, very slow. You know, you think with all the money that they must make that they could afford to uh, use some faster servers. So anyway, if that was successful with Save Wizard, then you'll have the PS4 folder, the save data folder, your profile folder, and then the save files will appear in here and you'll be all set and ready to go. So if you're not using Save Wizard and you're using the Apollo save tool in a jailbroken PS4 to re-sign the save files, then you would install it a different way where you would basically open up the zip file from Echo Stretch and just extract the PS4 folder directly uh, to your USB drive like this. So we have the non-re-signed version copied over. Now what you'll also need to do, whether you're using Save Wizard or not, is copy over the XFAT root folder, so the contents of the XFAT root folder, to the root of your USB drive. So you want the ELFs and Games folder copied over to the root of the drive. Again, not inside any existing folders. So you want the root of the drive, you just want them all copied over there to the root. And then in here, you've got your ELF files. So you can add more. At the moment, you can see we just have the USB game loader one. But you could also add like the network game loader so that you have the option to, you know, send PS2 ISOs over the network or load them from a USB drive, which I think would be pretty handy. If we go back to Macaulay's GitHub page, we go to the repositories, we can go to the PS2 network game loader or the ELF loader even. And then we can go to the releases and then just download the ELF file that you want to use. In my case, it would be 9.00 uh, right here. So anyway, download the ELF files that you want and just copy them over right here to the ELFs folder on the USB drive so that you can load them off the USB. So next inside the games folder, you've got the game name. So you just want to put in the name of, you know, any PS2 ISOs that you want to load. So for example, I've got Midnight Club 3, Dub Edition Remix. We'll go ahead and create the folder and then copy the ISO in there. Okay, with that copied over, we can delete this text file and we are all set to load that game. And it's the same for any other game you want to load. So we've got this other one here, Kolonoa 2. We'll go ahead and create a folder in the games folder with the name of the ISO uh, or just the name of the game. You can just call it whatever you want uh, and then go into that folder and copy the ISO inside. This is how everything has to be structured in order for the ELF file to actually be able to detect your ISOs and load them. Now, as a side note, apparently this version of the exploit also supports emulator config files. So that means you can edit the emulator settings to better set it up for the particular game that you're trying to run. So I haven't really noticed any difference when adding config files. So I'm not 100% sure if they're being loaded correctly uh, in this case, but supposedly it's supported as you can see here so basically what you need to do if you want to add a config file is you head to the ps2 classics emulator compatibility list you find whatever game that you want to you know edit in some way so for example if we go to that one that we were just copying over uh colona colonoa 2 there it is right there so as you can see here, it says there's some glitches on characters and a few other things. And it says check emulator configuration. If you click that option for your game, you can see there's emulator configuration files right here. So you can see this is the configuration file for this particular game, the CLI file. Find the title ID of the game. So you can do this by going to something like Serial Station and then typing in the name of the game. So K-L-O-N-O-A. Okay, there it is. 
So it shows up right here, and then that's the title ID of the game, although that is SCES, which I think is the European version, so we want the SLUS, because that's the one I have downloaded, which is the US version. Okay, so to add the emulator config, all we're going to do here is, first of all, we'll open up a notepad document, we'll copy the configuration for this particular game, we'll paste it in, and then we'll file save as We'll save it to the USB drive, to the games folder, to that particular game folder. And we need the name of the file, which in this case is going to be the title ID underscore CLI.config. So in that case, it's going to be CLUS-20151. We'll copy that ID right there. And then we'll save it as all files. And it needs to be underscore CLI.conf we'll save and then that should hopefully load that config file when we load the ISO. Again I haven't really noticed any difference when running the game with these config files or without them so I can't be 100% sure if it actually is loading these config files but I mean it is in the GitHub repository as saying that it can load config files so I assume it works but uh, yeah anyway so that's how you can add your config files for your emulators to try and adjust the emulator settings to work better for the ISO that you're loading. So yeah, that's pretty much it right there. You've got your ISOs loaded for your games inside the games folder, and you've got your elf files that you want to load inside the elfs folder. And of course, we've got our save file copied over here to the USB drive as well. Okay, so now we're going to eject the drive and plug it into our PS4. So of course, if you're on a jailbreakable PS4 and you still need to re-sign the save file, then you're going to run the Apollo save tool. Okay, so once the Apollo save tool loads up, we're going to head over to USB saves. So of course, with the European version, it's 02282, the US version 02199. So in my case, it's going to be the 2282 version. So I'm going to select it and then copy save game to HDD. And I'll tell it to resign the save file when it copies it over to my hard drive. Obviously, you need to make sure that your profile on your jailbroken PS4 is activated using the same account ID as the account that you're using on your PS4 or PS5 that's on the latest firmware. And then once again, we're just gonna close out of Apollo and then you would just copy the save file uh, using the application save data management, save data in system storage, copy to USB storage, and you would select your Okaji Shadow King game, save and copy it over to the USB. And then you can unplug that USB drive plug it into your PS4 or PS5 that's on the latest firmware and then copy it from the USB drive back to the internal storage on that system, run the game, and then you should be able to use this. Obviously, make sure the USB is still plugged in so that you can load your ELF files and your ISOs from that USB stick. So let's go ahead and give it a try here just on 9.00 because I don't have a, a 10.01 or a 10.50 PS4 to test this on and obviously the PS5 version of this isn't available yet for loading from the USB, so we're just gonna have to do it this way for now. So let's go ahead and load up the game. Okay, so we press the start button and restore game. And here we go, it says, do you want to load the MasterCore PS2 USB game loader? So in this case, I'm gonna say yes, but if I said no, it would give me the other elf option afterwards, which is gonna be uh, the network game loader. So because I have both ELF files on there, I can choose whether I want to send the ISOs over the network or from the USB. In this case, we want to test the USB loader. So we're going to say yes to load the USB one. And there we go. PS2 game loader USB. Do you want to play Kelowna 2? So again, I could say yes, but if I say no, it will give me the next game in the list. So if I say no, it says, do you want to play Midnight Club 3? So let's say yes to this one. And there you go, it's starting to transfer it over from the USB drive. So we can't really draw a good comparison right now in terms of uh, loading speeds versus from the USB drive and sending it over a network connection. So sending it over via a wired network connection is going to be faster right now because, well, at least in my case, because I can only use a USB 2.0 USB drive, which has very limited read and write speeds, which is why it's taking so long to send this over right now. Uh, whereas hopefully if this issue with the USB drives can be solved so that most USB drives work, then we could use a faster USB 3.0 drive and kind of compare the speed to sending it over a wired connection and see, you know, if there's any significant difference in the loading speeds. Okay. 
Okay, and here we go. As you can see, we've got the game loaded up right here, running no problem, just as before. But this time, we successfully loaded it from the USB drive. We can be completely offline. This entire time, my PS4 has been offline. As you can see, if I head into network, I have disconnected it from the internet. But we were successfully able to load a PS2 ISO and the ELF file for the exploit directly from the USB drive. So again, hopefully some of the issues can be fixed. Keep an eye out for a pinned comment that I will leave in the comment section uh, if this exploit gets updated to fix some of these issues like the you know incompatible USB drives as well as the PS5 not being supported. So when PS5 is supported or when the USB drive issue gets fixed, I'll leave a pinned comment in the comment section to let you guys know. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.